Cobweb, a movie that follows a young boy named Peter who starts to hear things go knock in the night in his bedroom while his parents insist that it must just be his imagination. Pretty vague description there, but I just want to leave it there in case you want to go into this film blind. This is a horror thriller directed by Samuel Broden and produced by the team of Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg, James Weaver, Roy Lee, and John Berg, and a film that went fairly under the radar, really overshadowed by this Barbenheimer weekend craze. The movie theater that I went to was filled with pink for the new Barbie movie that came out, and I've never felt more weird wearing neutral colors, but there's a first for everything. I only heard of Cobweb a couple days before its release, and I hadn't seen any trailers either, so I went into this one blind overall, not knowing anything about it. The marketing, or, or lack thereof really, for this film was really a miss here. Maybe Lionsgate thought this movie was a throwaway, or they wouldn't be able to compete with this Barbenheimer weekend. I can't say for sure really, but I think they miscalculated. In terms of that spectrum in horror movies of is this film a hit or is this film a miss, this one is a hit, if you ask me. If you look at a site like Rotten Tomatoes or something similar, you're gonna see a fair amount of the critics saying that this film has a lot of unanswered questions, plot holes, or doesn't have a meaningful message to really say. And while I don't totally disagree with that sentiment, I think this is such an unfair way to really grade or review a horror thriller movie like this one. Yes, some critics or reviewers or anybody talking about movies may have many more films that they've watched under their belt than the average viewer. But when it comes to just talking about the overall enjoyment of a movie, I think these reviewers and critics should take a page from Roman in succession. Hey, we are bullshit. We are not bullshit. We are bullshit. You are bullshit. You're fucking bullshit. Man, I'm fucking bullshit. She's bullshit. It's all fucking nothing. Quite honestly, if you popped a social or economic message into a film like this and cranked up all the unanswered questions, plot holes, then those same critics would probably be raving about it. So, if you ask me, not every movie needs to mean something deeper or say something about society. It's just a fun time and that's all I'll say there. I would recommend that if you don't know anything about this film and you're into this horror thriller genre that you go in blind as well. This isn't going to be a spoiler review but if you don't want any kind of spoiler whatsoever just know that I recommend seeing it in theaters. It was a fun entertaining watch. Not a perfect movie and that's not what I'm going to argue today at all, but one of those that pleasantly surprised me in the horror category for 2023. Getting into some of the performances within this movie, we have some great ones. We have Anthony Starr as Homelander. Uh, uh, no, he's Mark. He's Mark in this film. Lizzie Kaplan as Carol, and they are the two parents in this movie of Peter. We also see Cleopatra Coleman playing a teacher role in this one, and she does a great job as well. Really, who's stealing the show in this movie, though, is... Anthony Starr and Lizzie Kaplan. I don't think this is really a spoiler if you've seen any of the trailers or if you even watched the first couple scenes of the movie, but wow, Anthony Starr and Lizzie Kaplan do a great job of creeping me the fuck out for the entire runtime of this film. Anthony Starr does a fantastic job of being creepy and angry and uh, there's a lot of elements of Homelander in his performance in this one. I think he pulled off something pretty good in this movie. I do think Lizzie Kaplan really stole the show in this one. The level and range of emotions that she's able to convey in this film while being pretty creepy throughout the whole thing is impressive and was enjoyable to watch. One of the best performances I've seen her do, albeit I haven't seen everything she's been in in recent years to be fair, I mean the lasting memory I have of her is when she exploded all over that tarp in Cloverfield, so. I don't feel so good. She did a great job of exploding, but I think she did even better of acting in this movie. But Samuel Bowden did do a great job of having this feeling of tension in the film from literally the start of the movie all the way pretty much till the end. Had some unique scares to it, some that they pulled from other films that were similar, but I thought they were very creepy. There's moments that freaked me out, left imagery in my head, and some sequences that I think were really well put together and made for an enjoyable viewing experience. For example, I just watched all five Insidious movies. That was the last video I did. You can check that out if you want. But throughout all of those movies, 
I don't think any of them pulled off any scares as good as a couple of the ones I'm thinking of in this movie. You can write that on whatever scale you want. Some people hate the Insidious movies, but I did think that there were some very creepy, unsettling moments in this film. Most of the time, too, when I'm watching these horror movies, these horror thrillers, those moments are not what carry the film, but they're what really make it stand apart and make it memorable. If you can put all the other pieces of a story, plot, well-crafted performances, and then mix in these really creepy scare moments, that's what really pulls everything together, in my mind. And that's what they did in Cobweb. It's about an hour and a half long, give or take a few minutes, so the runtime went by really quick, and I don't think that the movie dragged along in any spots, really at all. M maybe a couple, but it went by fast for the entire runtime. It even ended in a a way, if, if you know, you know, but they didn't spend too much time on it. Just, it ends pretty quickly. I went into Barbarian, a 2022 film that you probably have heard about at this point, which also had Roy Lee as one of the producers uh, involved. And I went into it in a similar way, pretty blind, not knowing much about the film going into it. And I think both these movies have something in common in the fact that some of the fun of watching them is in the element of discovery and being taken on this ride throughout the runtime of the film. Not exactly knowing where it's going to take you or where it's going next. The producers of Cobweb did seem to have some other movies in mind while drafting and writing this one, in my opinion. Oh my gosh, dude. Look who's making an appearance now. So I guess we're doing it like this. I was seeing some elements of the Babadook, Barbarian, Malignant, just to name a few in this film. But Cobweb did have a level of uniqueness to it, so I did appreciate the level of care that went into making sure that this film wasn't a direct copy of any of those I mentioned. As far as complaints go, I really don't have too many strong ones to say here. But what I'll say is at times, they show a bit more than I think they should have to scare the audience and also use a bit more detail in these visual effects than this movie was really able to pull off at an effective level. Really, there's just a couple moments towards the end of the film where I was thinking, ah, wish they didn't show that. And I, I think the audience that I was in would agree with that too. I heard a couple audible chuckles when these reveals, so to speak, happened. So just a note. With that said, it didn't take away too much from the overall experience of the movie, and I did still have a good time with it. So to sum it up, I was really impressed with what Cobweb pulled off. This is another one of those films where it's not marketed well, it comes out randomly, it receives some mixed reviews, but I think over time is really going to build up more of a cult following. If you're a horror fan, a thriller fan, I do think that this is one of those movies that you must see eventually. If you don't get out to the theaters, watch it once it pops on streaming. I can almost guarantee that you're not going to hate it. You're going to enjoy it on some level, and it's a pretty fun watch. It's not perfect. There's parts that maybe could have been written better. There's maybe more answers they could have completed in the story, what have you. But you're going to have a good time, especially if you get some buddies over you're gonna have fun have a couple drinks you don't even need a couple drinks i was sober and it was a good time so watch it when you can and come back to this video and let me know what you thought it's not gonna be revolutionary or really shake too many things up in the horror space but i would strongly recommend that if you can get out with a few of your friends to the theater then do so it's a fun time it gives you something to talk or joke about after the credits roll and hopefully if you've seen it already you can agree with this on some level so let me know what you think in the comments have you seen it yet have you not? Did you love it? Did you hate it? I want to hear your opinion. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.